Mondays are never high. Hi. He wants to be on camera too. It is POC a thon today, and I am super excited to get started. But of course, I also end up having to work overtime this week. So, how much will I be able to read? Who can tell? But I will try my best. I'm starting with How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemison. I've already read the first short story and it was really interesting. So I'm very interested in continuing with this short story collection. The good thing about a short story collection is that I can guilt-free wake up, listen to one of the stories, and then continue on with my day without thinking that I have wasted too much time that I should have been spending working. So I am very excited to continue with that. I'm probably also going to read a couple mangas, another One Punch manga, because I love that series so much. And um, we'll see what else the day takes me. Hopefully I'll actually have time to uh, get in some quality reading. Mondays are never my best work day, especially after I've spent a week on vacation. So last week I had a very lovely week of just reading and working on my videos and not having to think about work or uh, my own stuff, which is also work. Let's move on. So I've spent the day staggering through work and family obligations and housework and various other things and honestly this morning the N.K. Jemison short story was the most reading that I've done all day basically. I mean I've also read another One Punch Man manga just because it's easy and it's comforting and it's very calming. I might end up doing that again tonight. Um, I've tried to pick up a couple other books and it's just like, even even watching booktube videos, I'll get like five, ten minutes in and I'll be like, hmm, I should be doing something. Hmm, what is that? Hmm. So my attention's not really there. So maybe it might be best just to continue reading the manga that I had picked out. If not One Punch Man, I could also pick up uh, The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. I've been meaning to uh, pick that one up anyway. So maybe today is the day that I will do that and actually figure out uh, what it's all about and how much I like it. That sounds like a really good idea, actually. Hmm. This book is really cute. Unfortunately, it is also really heavy, and for whatever reason, my book hug does not want to hold it in such a way that I can turn the pages without hurting them. So, I have to read it by hand and I have to put it down. It's really quite sad because I was really enjoying it. I probably could read that book in about one sitting if I had any wrists that would work for anything at all. But on the plus side, I have a beautiful friend with me. The 
prince and the dressmaker is so cute. I ship it. I ship it so hard. Oh my god, that was adorable. I need to get that one for my shelf. Five out of five stars. Amazing. I love it.
wants my attention first. So week one of POC a thon is over, and I have finished quite a few little books if you count all of the graphic novels and manga that I've done. Um, so far, I have read uh, four volumes of One Punch Man. I just love it so much, and I've come to the end of what my library actually has to offer, which means that I'm going to have to wait before getting the eighth volume, which is very sad because it's a fantastic little series. It's hilarious, too. I, I laugh so hard. Then I also finished a graphic novel um, on the day one, which was The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. And that was so incredible. That was a perfect way to start my readathon because it was just so cute and adorable and fluffy. And it was just exactly what I needed after a long day of frustrating work. It's been a long week of frustrating work. Yes, yes, I, I do see you here. It's been a long week of frustrating work, but I have been able to get in some reading along the way. I have also read Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse, and probably the reason that I finished this book so quickly was because it is so, so, so good. Uh, I love this series. It's pretty much in the ballpark for me as a Mercy Thompson alternative. Um, Mercy Thompson by Patricia Briggs is one of my favorite series, and this series, the Sixth World series by Rebecca Roanhorse, has quickly become a favorite as well. I just love the world building. It's so fast paced that you really just can't put it down um, when you start when you pick it up. And this second book, it just did not go where I expected it to. Every time I'd be like, okay, well, I expect sort of like this to happen in the back of my head, and then it would veer off to the left, and uh, everything really uh, made sense. But at the same time, it surprised me and I enjoyed it immensely. I am currently reading The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. Sorry if that's mispronounced. And I really enjoy it. I picked it up because I have some problem areas in my house that I was thinking of taking care of and I figured that would motivate me to actually, you know, go in and tidy those places. Um, and it's definitely doing that. Um, I haven't actually tackled them yet because I've not done the book. I want to read it cover to cover and then I will go in and tidy my entire house. And if this works as uh, advertised, I will never have to do another big tidying purge again. Here's to hoping. And the other one that I'm currently reading is How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. And this is a short story collection that I have been reading since day one and I love it so much. Each of these short stories is just the perfect little um, way to start my day and it's they're just they're all so brilliant. They've, they've each got a very distinct flavor to them but what I really enjoy and that I haven't seen in another story collection and perhaps I should be um, examining why I haven't is the way each story leads into the next one um, and that's thematically because like I said, they're all very different beasts that take a, a wide range of subjects and themes and kind of tie it together one story at a time. So like the first story in the short story collection is about a city in a parallel world to ours. The second book, the second story, <laughs> the second story in this uh, collection it takes place in New York City and it treats the city as a uh, beast, a creature of its own that requires a conduit in a person. Um, and the third story, um, she's a conduit or she can uh, communicate with like spirits. And she also uh, uses magic in certain herbs. And in the fourth story, she cooks using magic. Um, and each one has like this little thematic thing that leads to the next one. And I just think that's such a beautiful, subtle thing. And it really 
makes me want to keep reading on and it really it, it makes me I have to pick up this book I'm, I borrowed it from the library in audio and I have to pick up a physical copy for my shelves after I'm done it's just so incredible uh, but I expect nothing less from N.K. Jemisin to be honest my favorite stories in this bunch so far I really liked Red Dirt Witch um, it made me cry at the end um, that one is probably my favorite maybe the Trojan Girl um, just because I really liked the um, like cyberpunk kind of elements to it and the AI. I found that very interesting. The one that I probably should not have read before bed last night was called The Evaluators. And oh my god, let's not think about that while trying to fall asleep. Ah. So, what's next for me? Uh, today is probably my only real reading day. I'm hoping to get a good chunk of the way through of uh, the Marie Kondo book, and I am hoping to also pick up my different continent book, which is going to be a Talia Hibbert book because I love Talia Hibbert and have not read through her entire catalog. Um, I'm going to be picking up The Princess Trap, and after that, I'm hoping to pick up American Dreamer by Adriana Herrera, and uh, because I've got a slew of library books that are going to be coming due soon, I might just contain it to that and try to get through s at least some of those library books or at least decide whether or not I actually want to read them. Um, because then I will have uh, actually read something for each of the prompts, which is my goal here for POC -a -thon. So, I better get back at it, huh? <laughs> again I get into this little bit of a reading funk where I've read too much in a short period of time and every book that I pick up is just not catching my attention and that is the case with my life right now. I have read five graphic novels so far during the POC-a-thon and I have read three novels and I had such high hopes of completing another two but I am just done I am so tired. 
I still have a few days left in the poc -a -thon, so you never know, I might get over my funk in a day or so and pick another book up and finish it before Saturday, but I wouldn't count on it. If I do, you can look forward to another video when I can do a wrap up with all of the books that I have read for this lovely readathon. Now, if you were taking part in this readathon, please let me know what you have read so far because I'm super interested and I may even want to read again someday and read one of the books that you did. Um, until then, I'm going to sign off and say a happy reading. I'm burnt out of reading. How about you, babes? He could take it or leave it. He sleeps through all everything anyway. He sleeps through everything anyway.